Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Samuel Adams Returns, the Anti-Federalist. Absolutely got it right. And this is Tom Novolis, your host. And uh, as I always do, is let you know that Liberty Works Radio Network is you. It is a listener-funded network, and uh, you know, go take a look at what's going on. There's a, a lot of great programming, and I absolutely encourage you to take and participate because that's the what keeps it going. That's what keeps Liberty Works Radio Network going as uh, a sounding place that broadcasts truth for yes. Our liberty, and that's what it's all about. And it gets down to here exactly what the federal farmer was talking about. In uh, and, and we're going to get right to the meat of it when he was talking about that the Confederation uh, of States. And we're going to roll back to some of the anti-federalists that if we were going to have something that really maintained our individual liberties, that we had a look at the sovereignty of uh, the states and that we the people are actually or should actually be citizens of our state first and foremost and that that governance within that sovereign body is better maintained than it ever can be maintained at a consolidated federal level. We're seeing that. We're seeing our liberties are at the whims of those who are uh, inside of the legislature, and now we have no real representation again, as with Britain, in that I don't understand. Do you? Can you pull it together and understand how is it that you have one representative for a million, 1.2 million people? I mean, that's really you know what what's going on. Uh, maybe in a couple states it may be less because there's state populations left, but, you know, a congressperson like here in Ohio, my representative in, in my congressperson is, you know, represents about 1.2 million people. Do I feel represented? No. You know, so the, we're going to talk about that because the anti-federalists really brought that out in a, in a certain manner. But what, he ta- what they were talking about and in, in what I was saying is that this framework – uh, came came up and and it's a confederated uh, republic being organized. Each state must retain powers for managing its internal police. And what they meant by police was those actions of government, not the cops. Okay, uh, and all uh, delegate uh, and all delegate to the union power to manage general concerns. So that should be within the framework of the state. The quantity of power. Uh, the union must possess is one thing. The mode of exercising the power is given, uh, powers given is quite a different consideration, and it is the mode of uh, it exercising them. So this is why you know, the exercising of power is something that I always talk about that's relative to the Constitution as a framework, okay? And then constitutionalism, which is the... Uh, implementation, the exercising of those powers, and uh, you know, so when you have this consolidated government, it, it's like, oh, okay, now how are you going to exercise them? So he says that makes one of the essential distinctions between one entire or consolidated government and a federal republic. So, oh, he, this is the argument right from the beginning: is that do we really have a federal? Republic. Now, that's what it's being called, but in actual implementation and action, uh, not so. As I keep looking at all of the different activities and how the money is funneling down, you could you could just take the the healthcare debacle uh, into your your hands itself. I mean, I've already talked about that a number of times. I've uh, put up an extensive post that now that we're in it, we can't get out of it because of the UN relationship uh, in concert of that, that now we're mandated. We have to go to universal health care, and nobody wants to talk about that in Congress. They, they know that they have to do it and that we have to go in that direction because we've spent money on it. Obama locked us in. Up until Obama locked us in and, and the Democrats in Congress locked us in, We did not have to go in that direction uh, from a U.N. compliance perspective. 
But when that first dollar, remember, one dollar, one dollar is all that has to be spent on a treaty or international executive agreement. And once that dollar is spent, it gives assent and authority for that to be put into place and all those rules around it. Now we have to battle within the context of who we are in legislative bodies to extract ourselves from it. So in, in what he was saying here is that it is a consolidated government and not the federal republic that everybody expects it to be. And that's going to be interesting. So that is, however, the government may be organized. So he goes, that is, however, the government may be organized if the laws of the union in, in most important concerns as levying and collecting taxes, raising troops, etc., operate immediately upon the persons and property of individuals and not on states extend to the organizing the militia, etc., the government as to its administration as to making and executing laws is not federal but consolidated you get that and, and and so when you have the leftists when you have these socialist communist uh obamaites alinskyites uh all of these and, and that have learned and read these anti-federalist letters they know that we're not really the federal operation, the federal republic that everybody thinks we are. A and I'm telling you, this, this was mind-blowing. I found a couple and, and read into a couple of the anti-federalists that I haven't read in a long time, haven't read before. Uh, you know, something that I read by the Sentinel <clears throat> before. And I'm telling you, I, it just... Uh, caught me off guard as I was going through this again and looking at what was going on with the Senate, looking at these people. I mean, my own senator here in Ohio, Portman, yes, I'm doing this for Ohio. Uh, yeah, yes, Ohio has this massive you know, prescription drug thing. I mean, what is it, 33,000 people died since the beginning of the year here in Ohio? Yeah, we have an epidemic. But the epidemic is because we have not tightened up those things on doctors, uh, we, we've allowed a lot of that to happen. And on top of that, you know, you, we don't go after the criminal element. So, you know, it, and more importantly, the churches really haven't been doing their job to the extent that we do not have that moral and virtuous people because we allowed this. Anyway, I'll take you down all of those rabbit holes. And, uh, you know, so anyway, getting back to here uh, is what the... Uh, this one was from, wow, uh, the Sentinel. And what the Sentinel, and the anti-federalist the Sentinel was talking about uh, is once again, he says, uh, when, uh, what then are we to think of the motives and designs of those men who are urging the implicit and immediate adoption of the proposed government? Are they fearful that if you exercise your good sense and discernment, you will discover the masquerade uh, or the masked uh, aristocracy that they are attempting to smuggle upon you under the suspicious garb of republicanism. That was a question, okay? Uh, is there something more insidious there? And when, when you look at some of the people and the arguments during the convention, and again, the Anti-Federalists did not have Madison's notes. They didn't have Yates' notes. And so, you know, some of these guys like Yates uh, were the Anti-Federalists. So when you get down to this, what is it? They, right there, they recognized, listen, here, here's the thing. The Anti-Federalists recognized without even having those notes the difference in that it would be a consolidated government. So he, he was talking about uh, the aristocracy that would come about. He was talking about in many of the states, particularly in Pennsylvania and the northern states, there are aristocratic untas of a well-known few who have been zealously endeavoring to establish 
uh, this Constitution. Uh, and, and then take and say that it is equal liberty, but all their efforts were un, unavailing, unavailing, and their ill-bred churl uh, ostensibly kept this assumed station. So you, when you compare the authority under the convention, and, and he's saying they made an assumption of sovereignty, and they have entirely annihilated the old confederation. You know, the Articles of Confederation had a lot of good stuff in them. I, somebody was telling me about a book that's out right now that they're reading that actually gets into that detail of uh, what happened and that the, you know, all the good stuff with the Articles of Confederation, which I've talked about and I, and I actually lecture on, uh, were destroyed and would have given us more liberties than, than what we really have now. And instead, they established one general government instead of having uh, that uh, confederation of the particular governments of the several states. And uh, so now we have this pervasive union. And what it does is it uh, constitutes a most unequal principles. It's destitute of accountability to the constituents. Right there. When we talk about now uh, all of the expansion of what's happening in government, how is it accountable? When you go to vote now, remember, you're one in 1.2 million here in my district to take and try and get this guy to do something. Really? We're going to, you know, what is it going to take uh, right there? I mean, that was half, 1.2 million people. It was al almost half of the colonies that then take, took him and, and rebelled against England. So what do you do with that? You know, so when we get into this, uh, we, we have this no, no accountability. And uh, as a uh, despotic in the nature, as the Venetian aristocracy. Oh, my. Uh, you know, I haven't really watched it, but I've read about the Medici. So when you take and you, I guess it's up on Netflix, is the Netflix, you know, thing on the Medici. Just think about that. A Venetian aristocracy. So... Geez, that's real interesting when we start thinking about then in the Senate in particular. And, and that's really where I was going to try and get to is the Senate uh, is an oligarchy. Uh, it is an aristocracy. You can't get rid of these guys in, in, in real effect. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot to do in taking and learning how to implement this constitution, this framework that is really, uh, in so many ways, good. And it has done us so, so well. But we have the swamp. And the swamp knows these anti-federalist components better than you or I. So the, what we have is this particular government termed the whole a confederation of the United States uh, pursuant to the sentiments of that profound but corrupt political Machiavellia. Holy smokes, you know, who advised uh, that if you're going to change the Constitution to keep as much as possible to the old forms. To, so then that the people seeing the same officers, the same formalities, the courts of justice and other outward appearances are insensible of the alterations and believe themselves in possession of their old government. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked about that. I've talked about the Kozak plan. Uh, we've seen that exactly what's happened with the Democrats and how we have this consolidated government. But what's happening? Who's on the courts? What are we seeing within all of these sub courts? Thomas Jefferson said you can't trust the judiciary because there's absolutely no accountability. And we're seeing a lot of things happen in that. So uh, as we come back into the next segment, we're going to roll back some more into talking about this consolidated government and how it is affecting America today and that the anti-federalists predicted. So think about the Menachees, think about the aristocracy, think about the oligarchy in the Senate, and then think about us being locked into the globalism within the United Nations, even to the extent that we're not going to be able to get out of going in that direction of universal health care unless there is a complete repeal and defunding of every 
aspect of the Congress care or Obamacare. Has to be 100% defunded. Come on back in the next segment. We'll see you then here on Samuel Adams Returns, the Anti-Federalists. They got it right. 